Good morning, everyone. We welcome you once again to our Sunday worship service. The Lord has blessed us with much, and so it's our time to celebrate and to give back the glory and praises that He deserves. Now join us as we sing songs of praise and thanksgiving to Him today. Hallelujah.
Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. I want to see. Everyone sing with us. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. Yes, today we pray. I want to see. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. A blessed Sunday, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday worship service online here in Ictus Dumaguete. I am Pastor Jovin Lim, and I would like to welcome everybody in this wonderful day to worship God in spirit and in truth. And as we start, let us open this with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day, O God. Father, thank you for gathering your children online. Thank you for our excitement and our joy to worship you in spirit and in truth together. Now, Father God, we pray for wisdom, we pray for guidance, and we pray for your revelation today. As we study your word, help us to draw closer to you and to be more like Jesus as we apply this truth today. Lord Jesus, 
You, we, we want to glorify your name. We want to uphold your name on high. And Lord, help us to become more like you day by day. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge that you are our greatest teacher. So bless us now and guide us as we unpack the spiritual truth that we will be learning today together. Thank you, Abba Father, for this wonderful time to worship you, to glorify your name. You are such a faithful and a good, good Father to all of us. This is all we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So today, beloved, let's discover the five dimensions of prayer. There are times in our life that we are pulled in different directions. If you feel like you are being pulled in different directions, you need a multidimensional way of praying. Today, we will be looking at a fresh look about praying in the five dimensions of prayer. Before that, let me just share to you the two fundamental bases of prayer as our jump board today. Number one is this, God is a multidimensional God. Your fulfillment and fruitfulness in prayer is not dependent on how much you know about prayer or your experience in praying. But remember this, that your foundation, your fruitfulness and your blessedness and your fulfillment in praying is all about how deep you understand the God that you are praying to. The more you understand God, the more effective your prayers are. The most important thing other than learning how to pray is knowing the God that you pray to. It starts with knowing that our God is a multidimensional God. Now, what does it mean that our God is a multidimensional God? We can see it in three biblical truths of who He is. So number one is this. Our God is a multidimensional God. We see it in God's creation. If you look at Job chapter 11, verses 7 to 9, it says, Can you fathom the limits and bounds of the greatness and power of God? The sky is no limit for God, but it lies beyond your reach. God knows the world of the dead, but you do not know it. God's greatness is broader than the earth and wider than the sea. We know that God is a multidimensional God, because it shows in the complexity of His creation. We cannot fathom God's creation by our limited and finite mind. There is another way we can see God as a multidimensional God. Number two, we see it in Jesus' incarnation. Incarnation means God became flesh when God came on earth through Jesus, became a human being and lived among people. In John chapter 1, verse 14, it says, The Word became a human being and lived among us. We saw His glory, and He was full of grace and truth. The fact that God can come to earth and can become human means He is a multidimensional God. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 4, it also says, Grace and peace to you from Him who is and who was and who is to come. What does it mean for us? Jesus is not limited by space or time. This verse shows that our God is a multidimensional God. Number three, we see it in how the Holy Spirit moves. In John chapter 3, verse 8, it says, The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you don't know where the wind comes from or where it's going. That's the way it is with everyone born of the Holy Spirit. You can control the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is moving in dimensions we can't move in. In Job chapter 9, verses 10 to 11, it also says, he does wonders that cannot be understood. He does so many miracles they cannot be counted. When He passes me, I can see Him. And when He goes by me, I don't recognize Him. Through these three biblical truths, we discover that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are multidimensional. What does it mean for us, beloved? We are never alone. You are not alone in this journey that we have. He is in the past, He is in the present, and He is in the future. He is everywhere. 
And we must put our confidence and hope to our multidimensional God. In Psalms 139 verses 7 to 12, the Word of God says, Where could I go to escape from you? Where could I ever get away from your presence? If I went up to heaven, you'd be there. If I lay down in the world of the dead, you'd be there. If I flew what beyond the east or live in the farthest place in the west, you'd be there to lead me. You'd be there to help me. I could ask the darkness to hide me, but even darkness is not dark for you. And night is as bright as the day, and darkness and light are the same to you. So, let me give you a tip. Never ever play hide and seek with God because in every place you try to hide, God is already there. He is everywhere, beloved. So knowing that God is everywhere and understanding that He is a multidimensional God, what's the importance of it in terms of prayer? The importance of knowing that God is in all dimensions is that we can pray to God in all dimensions of our life too. Today, let's discover how to pray in five dimensions of prayer to our Heavenly Father. So, the first dimension is, I look backward to the cross. What I mean by this is, when I pray, I will not start with my problems today, or fears in tomorrow. I will start with remembering the cross because it sets my heart with the attitude of gratitude. This is a good place to start with because it fills your heart with thanksgiving. It gives you the opportunity to thank God for what Jesus has done on the cross for you. Now, there are things that we need to remember for what God has done for us. One is how deeply God loves us. Two, how costly evil and sin is. And third, we're completely forgiven. That's the good news, beloved. And if you think about the cross, as you start in praying, you will burst in thanksgiving for who God is and what He has done for you through our Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. You know, that's a good way to start our prayer. Remember, Prayer must not start with our concerns, our needs, our desires, our plans, our future dreams. Prayer must start with God. He, it must always start with knowing who God is and what He has done for all of us. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 to 19, it says, God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life. He paid for you with the precious life blood of Christ the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. What a beautiful word, an encouragement and a confirmation of our worth in the Lord. Beloved, that's how God looks at your work. How about you? How do you see the worth of your own life? Are you full of self-pity lately? Feeling that you are not good enough, not beautiful enough or handsome enough, not smart enough? When is enough for you, beloved? I want to tell you this, if you look for what's enough through the standard of this temporal world, you will get frustrated because it's rapidly changing and depreciating. What's enough today might not be enough by tomorrow or next month or next year. Beloved, if you want to know your worth, don't look at what other people might say about you or what you say even about your life or your own accomplishments or your position, or your possessions, like material things, wealth, and others. Rather, starting today, look at the cross, and you will realize how much is your worth in Christ Jesus. That's how God loves you, and that's for eternity. Beloved, Jesus Christ gave His life for you. The Son of God became the Son of Men, so that the sons of men will become sons of God. Amen? Know your worth through the cross and you will realize how much God loves you. Dimension number two, beloved, in our prayer is this. I look upward to my Father's loving face. That's the second thing that we need to do when we pray. In this part of your prayer, God wants you to see Him not as your dictator, not as your boss, not as your supervisor, not as your coach. 
when Jesus said, this is how you should pray, you should call God Father. Remember the first phrase of the Lord's Prayer, Our Father, not our boss, not our king, not our Lord, not anything else, but our Father. We know how radical it is if we will look at the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, out of 23,145 verses in the Old Testament, there are only at least 10 verses that mention God as a Father. Most people call God in the Bible, in the Old Testament specifically as King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Majestic, Holy, Creator, and all those really big terms. Only few people really call God as Father for a thousand of years. That's why when Jesus taught His disciples how to pray, it's really radical for them to learn calling God as a Father. It is something that they learn and enjoy praying. Beloved, let me ask you, how about you when you pray? What kind of a picture you have of who God is? Like an officer in the army? Like your boss? The president? Or a stranger? If this is the kind of view you have when you pray, then you will find it hard to really connect with God. Beloved, I want to challenge you starting this week. Pray to God by calling Him Abba, Daddy, Papa, or Tatay. You know why I am challenging you? Because it's the term that God wants to be called when you pray to Him. Jesus was the one teaching His disciples to call God Father. And now to us, then when we pray, we can start calling God Father. That's why in His prayer model, it's called Our Father. He started his prayer with that phrase. Remember, beloved, that the way you see God will guide your life than any other things in this world. The way you see God will determine your prayer's fulfillment and fruitfulness. In Romans chapter 8, verses 15 to 17, it says, You should not act like cowering, fearful slaves, since God's Spirit has adopted you as children into God's family. Instead, by His Spirit, we simply cry out, Abba, Father. And God's Spirit affirms that we really are His children. And since we are now God's child, we're all ears with Christ and will share in both His suffering and His glory. In these verses, there are three spiritual truths that you can stand on in having a relationship with God as your Father. God wants your prayers to be Number one, personal. That's why it says Abba or Daddy, Tatay, Papa. Beloved, it always starts with the foundation of intimate relationship with God by believing and accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Beloved, always remember this. In everything, in our faith, in our prayer, in our worship, in our service to God, it will always start with relationship. If you want that everything you do will not become a pressure, but in everything you do for God, it will become a pleasure, then you must start with relationship. Beloved, number two is this. God wants your prayer to be passionate. That's why it says, cry out. Your passion in communicating with God, beloved, is only an outflow of your relationship with Him. Now, Listen to this. Many people would like to gauge into feelings. They want to be emotional when they pray because they thought if they are emotional, they will have that intimate experience with the Lord. Now, let me tell you this, beloved. What the Bible is telling us is quite the contrast or the opposite. You must build in first your relationship with God and your emotion your passion in praying, your passion in worship, your passion in reading the Bible is just an outflow of that relationship. Our foundation is not our feelings. Our foundation is not our emotion. Our foundation in this relationship that we have with God is not about the circumstances that's going on in our lives. Beloved, remember this. Our foundation, especially in prayer, is our identity, our relationship, with our Heavenly Father. 
Do you want to be more passionate in loving and in worship and in praying to God? Check your relationship. Check your intimacy with our Heavenly Father. Number three, beloved, is this. God wants your prayers to be in partnership. It must be a partnership with the Holy Spirit. It says here, by His Spirit. In Romans chapter 8, verse 26, it says, Also, the Holy Spirit helps us with our weakness. We often do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit Himself speaks to God for us, even begs God on our behalf with deep groanings and feelings that words cannot e express. Beloved, every time you pray, God talks to Himself and to you and all about you. The Holy Spirit helps you when you are weakened and you don't know what to pray. Beloved, do you have some hard prayers right now? Something you really want to ask from God, but you don't know how to ask from Him? Beloved, may this point remind you that the Holy Spirit is helping. Just tell God about it, for He can understand you. He is God. So how to pray in five dimensions? Number three is this. I look inward to Jesus living inside me. So I already look backward. I already look upward. And now I need to look inwardly. I look inward to Jesus living inside me. Remember that Jesus is inside of you. God is in you. All three in you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Knowing that Jesus is living inside us, this gives us the confidence to face up and pray to our Heavenly Father. For He is the way, He is the truth, He is the life, and no one comes to the Father except through Him in John 14, 6. But remember this, but while Jesus is in us, we all know that there are also things living inside us that we don't want. It might be pride, unforgiveness, bad attitude, sin, resentment, hurtful memories, pains, and other things. So we need to have a heart checkup as part of our prayer. And this is the third dimension. We need to examine the condition of our hearts. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, examine yourself to see if your faith is real and growing. Test yourself. Remember that Jesus is living in you, unless you failed your test. This verse is telling us to examine our heart, our faith. Now, let me ask you, beloved, how's your faith and heart towards God lately? Is it real? Is it personal or just seasonal? Is it growing? Is it growing organic or natural growth or just a superficial and artificial growth? You might realize today that you can do better than where you are now through your heart's condition. Now, let me ask you, how many of you wants to get better? Do you want to get better? Now, I think all of us, we want it. We desire it to become more better than who we are today. We want to get better. That's why we are here. We are listening to the sermon. We are worshiping together. We are undergoing our discipleship journey because we want to get better and we are committed to it but remember this beloved that you can't get better until you face what's needed to be challenged or changed so because you can get better you need to admit what's that part in your heart that is bad broken or need of building up the truth will set you free amen that's what the Bible say. But remember this, the truth will set you free, but it makes you miserable at first because you need to face the real you inside your heart. The truth you like the least is the truth about you. In Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13, it says, If you try to hide your sins, you will never succeed. But if you humbly confess and reject them, you will receive mercy. So, as just you go through the process of opening up your life to God, what to do? Let me share to you three practical steps, three letter A's. Number one is this. Acknowledge that Jesus is inside you. 
If you receive, if you believe Him as your Lord and Savior, Jesus is really inside you. Number two, admit the things that you need to change. If, you, if it's needed that you will write it in a piece of paper or in a whiteboard, you need to face the reality. What's really your desire? What are the things that you really want to change in your attitude, in your habits, in your view of who God is or view of yourself and other people? And then thirdly, you need to adapt. Adapt Christ-likeness in your life through bearing the fruits of the Holy Spirit as mentioned in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 33. So we need to acknowledge, we need to admit, and we need to adapt Christ-likeness. How to adapt Christ-likeness? The bearing the fruits of the Holy Spirit. What are the fruits of the Holy Spirit? It says love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Beloved, those fruits of the Holy Spirit is a perfect picture of who Jesus is. That's why we need to adapt Christ-likeness in our life. Acknowledge, admit, and adapt. So now we've got backward looking at the cross. We've got upward looking at God's face. And we've got inward look of Christ in us. And now the fourth dimension is this. I look around and ask the Holy Spirit to use me. This is the fourth dimension of prayer. So you pray like this. Holy Spirit, show me how you are going to use me today. I want to challenge you that make it a part of your daily prayer to God. Other than just asking for what you need, what you desire, what are your dreams and future plans. But every day, make it a habit to pray, especially this fourth dimension. Holy Spirit, show me how you are going to use me today. Especially during the season of trials and crisis. Pray to God where He can use you at this very moment. Instead of criticizing or complaining or judging the world today, why not just say, Holy Spirit, tell me what's wrong and show me how to make a difference. In Romans chapter 6, verse 13, it says, Give yourself completely to God every part of you since you've been given a new life and you want to be used as a tool in the hands of god used for his good purposes now take note of that used for his good purposes beloved do you have the desire that god will use you especially during this time what does the text says give yourself completely to god every part of you the text also gives us a genuine indicator of a growing new life of a disciple of Jesus. It says, since you've been given a new life and you want it to be used. Remember, beloved, that one indicator of gaining a new life through Christ is the heart and the desire to be used by God. It is really normal for a person that Jesus Christ is living inside of him that will have that desire to be used for God's glory, to fulfill God's purpose, to serve with God-given talents and giftings, to give generously for God has given much. All these things can only be done when a person, now take note of this, those desires to serve, to give, to be used, can only be done when a person truly and really experience the newness and the freshness of life through Christ. Amen? When that person accept and believe in Jesus and he realize how God loves him so much and when that birthing through the Holy Spirit of that new life inside of him, he will desire more of being used by God, serving him or giving or supporting or reaching out the lost because of what God has done for him. Beloved, a true disciple of Jesus will have a burning passion and desire to ask God to be used by Him whatever, wherever, whenever, and however. So beloved, have you prayed to God lately in this fourth dimension? Holy Spirit, show me how you are going to use me today. Have you prayed that lately? 
or all your prayers are about asking what we need, our plans, our dreams, our ambitions. You know, all those I, I, I kind of prayer. It's my prayer that starting today, you will start to pray, Lord, Abba Father, Holy Spirit, show me how you're going to use me today. Beloved, if you don't know how it feels to be used by God exactly what He wants you to do, why not start it now? It's not too late. Remember this, being used by God is better than anything else in this world and what this world can offer to you. You know, my life is a living testimony, a fruit of my prayer 24 years ago when I committed my life to Christ and I prayed the three simple words, Father, Abba, Tatay, use me. That's my simple prayer. Father, use me. And it changed my whole life and I never regret it up to now. If I didn't see it, if I didn't experience how good it is to be used by God, I won't choose to take His call, especially in this full-time volunteer work as the lead pastor of Ictus Dumaguete. If Jonah and I didn't experience the goodness and faithfulness of God in our relationship as a couple and over our personal walk with God, we will not take this path in becoming a full-time volunteer and leave our job six years ago. But we choose to follow and serve God. We choose to respond to His call to serve Him because we know that obeying God's call brings blessings and favor than following our own desires, our own dreams, and our own ambitions in this life, in this temporary life. And you know what, beloved? God never fails. We are witnesses of God's faithfulness and goodness of who God is and what He has done in our lives. You know, 2011, we got married. By faith, we walk in obedience to God's call. And during that year, 2011, our eyes are opened in what is intentional discipleship is all about. And we respond and committed our lives to make disciples who make disciples into that intentional disciple-making journey. In 2012, we started the D group, a discipleship group in Bethel Guest House. And in 2014, Jonah and I were called by God to walk by faith, serve Him as full-time volunteers of Ictus Dumaguete. Me as the lead pastor and Jonah as the church administrator. We launched Ictus Dumaguete in Bethel Guest House together with our first core of disciple makers. 2015 to 2017, we kept on doing what God wants us to do, to make disciples who make disciples. We have an equipping center which we call now Ictus Dumaguete Movement Center or IDMC. We keep on building up rooted in Christ Jesus through the years. And it bears fruit by God's grace. By 2018, after seven years from the start of intentionally making disciples, and after three years of strengthening the core and the church, last February 2018, we birthed Ikto South Worship Center. And after that, after a year, God called us to launch our Ictus North. So we birthed last March 2019, Ictus North. And just early this year, we also give birth to Ictus West Worship Center, our community church. But when COVID-19 strikes, it changes everything. But God is good and faithful. We can see how He sustains the movement. The pandemic doesn't stop us to reach more and more, especially family and children in the community. God is really a God of His purposes and promises. All we need to do is trust. And obey. He works in mysterious ways. After the ECQ, GCQ, and now MGCQ, God slowly builds us up. He wants us to continue to rise up in fulfilling His plans and purposes. He let us establish Ictus Dumaguete online community to reach out and serve those people beyond Dumaguete, especially the overseas. And God is true to His vision for Ictus Dumaguete as he envisioned to give birth to Ictus East this year. It's being done this very day. 
at first, because of the COVID-19, I've been thinking about myself, God, will you not postpone it next year? God, maybe not now because of the pandemic. But you know what? God's ways are not our ways and His thoughts are not our thoughts. That's why all we need to do is pray, trust, depend upon Him, and obey. And beloved, the good news is today, we are launching Ictus East. Today is a mark of God's faithfulness and goodness. We didn't see it coming at this very season of pandemic, but who can stop God's plan? Amen? Who can? No one. And now, we are back where we have started the movement. We are launching today Ictus East Worship Center in Bethel Guest House as our conventional worship center. So now we have the online worship center, that's the online community, and we also have our conventional, our physical worship gathering in Bethel Guest House. We call it Ictus East. In this testimony, beloved, it's my prayer that you will not just be blessed and be inspired, but rather be challenged. Be challenged to choose that starting today, you will serve God in where He is calling you. Whatever, whenever, wherever, and however. And you will be surprised how He will let you experience the true satisfaction, the true fulfillment, the true fruitfulness as you serve God with all your heart. So beloved, let me ask you, do you hear it now that God is really calling you? Are you just delaying it? Maybe you have this reason because of the pandemic that we have. Beloved, if you hear God's call to serve Him, if you hear God's call to obey Him, act now. Take risk, trust, and obey. And you will surely experience how good, how beautiful, how satisfying, and how fulfilling it is to follow God's plan at this very moment when God is calling you. Beloved, as your pastor and as your friend, it's my prayer that you will be used by God. You will respond to His invitation. Together with those who are serving with us in Ictus family, we want you to take part because we want you to experience the beauty and the blessedness of being used by God. Beloved, you can't fathom the fruitfulness and fulfillment it brings in your life when you serve. You might be asking right now, I want to be used by God, but how? What's the requirement? You know what's the requirement? All you need to do is to become fat. So beloved, God wants you not to be tambok, but God wants you and requires you if you have the heart to serve. And now if you are so willing to serve, there are only three things. Fat, F-A-T. God wants you to be faithful. God wants you to be available. And God wants you to be trainable or teachable. In Ictus, there are many dynamic ways you can serve God. You can serve with a ministry team online or conventional or community outreach base for the mission-hearted. If you are into music, you can join our I Worship team. If you are into technology or photography, videography, with editing skills or computer tech, be part of our iTech. If you have the heart in welcoming people with your wonderful smiles in our worship gatherings, you can join our ISWAT ministry. If you love kids, then you can join us in discipling them online through our iKids ministry. We also have a new ministry called iCrew ministry. They are the men who serve in setting up the instruments and lightings for the conventional worship gathering every Sunday. And after all the options that I've just shared, if you might still be asking, I don't fit any of those. Well, we have a good news for you, beloved. We have this what we call host ministry, where you simply open a small group in your house or in a coffee shop, then you just start gathering at least two people with you and be a host. What, that, what does it mean host? What are the requirements to become a host? H stands for have a heart for people to grow with you in following Jesus. So you need to have that heart. And then letter O, open your house or meet in a coffee shop or anywhere that is possible for just once a week. And letter S stands for serve water or even small refreshments. And letter T, together grow in accountability and Christ-likeness by journeying through our Sunday worship services and Wednesday discipleship sessions. If you become one of our hosts, your gathering will be considered as one of our Ictus satellites. 
and we will help you all the way in strengthening your group of family or with your friends as you journey with us together. So you can serve in iWorship, you can serve in our tech, you can serve in iKids, iSWAT, iCrow, or iHost. Again, beloved, there is so much fulfillment and fruitfulness in serving God. You might be asking today why we are doing what we are doing. Because God will be using all of us to be His hands, to be His feet, to reach out people who are desperately in need of help because they are broken or being in pain or carrying a lot of hurts. People need the Lord, especially during this time of crisis. And we will do everything as the body of Christ to serve in His purposes and plans. Beloved, let me ask you, are you making your contribution in God's family, in the needs of your community? Are you responding to God's call to serve? Always remember this, God made you for more. Say this with me, God made you for more. If you have a seatmate while watching this, can you tell that seatmate, God made you for more. Amen? It means that we are not just here to live and die. We are not just here to live, survive, and die. We are here in this earth with our God-given purposes because God has given us a more meaningful life and we can live it. And you are always remember, you are made for more. To make yourself ready, you need to pray the fourth dimension of prayer. God, use me. Father, Daddy, Abba, use me. Just look around and if the Lord is convicting you to serve Him, then just serve. Beloved, do you see a need lately? Look around you. Do you have the interest and ability to respond? Then God is calling you. Serve Him and respond to His call. Stop doing something great in your life. Just keep doing ordinary things with a big amount of love, and God will bless that. Stop trying to find some significant place to serve. Why not starting today? Make what you are doing significant because you are pouring your heart into it, and God will bless you. The world is waiting for your contribution, beloved. The world needs your help. And by the way, the best lunch pad is your church family. We also praise God because He is preparing us to serve even more with what's coming in our church family. And we are excited for this. Soon we will be launching IDMC 3.0. You know, this church is built with IDMC DNA. What is IDMC? Intentional Disciple Making Church. And you know, this church is named after its DNA, IDMC. Ictus Dumagete Movement Center. And you know what? This church will continue to give hope, being hands and feet of Jesus to the community by launching a bigger platform for everyone to be part in reaching out and going out to the community. It's again IDMC. This is now the 3.0. Ictus Dumagete Missional Community. Again, beloved, the best launch pad is your church family. For Ictus family members, let's continue to be faithful in what God is calling us to do. We are called to serve, we're called to support, we're called to pray, we're called to make disciples. For those who are still thinking about being part of a church family, you are welcome here in Ictus Dumagete. I myself, as the lead pastor of this church, I want to welcome you wherever you are. You know, Ictus Dumagete, through its online church, is now connecting people beyond Dumaguete City. That's why we have our Ictus Online Church. I hope and pray that if you're not from Dumaguete, you can still connect with us, you can still journey with us with our online community. If you want to know more about Ictus Family, we would like to encourage you and invite you to take our LAMP 101 class this week in your most convenient time. Many of us are busy. Many of us have different free time. But we praise God for the technology. We have now our classes online and you can watch it anytime in your most convenient time. By watching LAMP 101 class, you will be discovering what is ICTUS all about. You will be discovering what are God's purposes for my life and how important it is that as I live my purposes, I need to be part of a family, of a church family. 
And it's my prayer that after you watch and you discover and learn from the LAMP 101 class, you will have a decision to come and journey with us wherever you are. Beloved, our joy is to help people grow in following Jesus. That's why our mission and vision is healing hearts, building lives, and transforming communities in Jesus' name. I hope that we can meet you there in our online classes. And for those who have their FDAP booklet, you can check it in the last part of our sermon outline. There is a reminder to contact Jonah and to have the access and register for our LAMP 101 class. Beloved, see you in our LAMP 101 class as you discover your purpose and, uh, and discover the importance of God's family. So now, let's go to the last and the fifth dimension of our prayer to God. So now, beloved, let's look at the fifth dimension. This is the last dimension that we'll be discovering today. It says, I look forward to my future in faith. Now, in our prayer, we already look back, look up, look within, and look around. Now, we are looking forward. This is the time that we talk to God about our tomorrow and our future. Especially during this time, we are facing a lot of uncertainties. Beloved, let me ask you, do you have some dreams? Do you have some plans? How was it, especially this time of COVID? Does it change? Are you being challenged? You know what's the best thing if you are following God's vision and plan for your life? Nothing can stop it from happening in your life if you, remember this, if you walk by faith. What does it mean to walk by faith? You simply trust and obey one step at a time, one day at a time. Beloved, our Father in heaven loves to hear you talking to Him about your dreams, about your plans. And if it is according to His will and good for you, He will bless it. But if it will endanger you, He will protect you from it. Beloved, you will not get everything you want in your prayers. You know that. We already discussed that. Because God is a good, good Father. And what He will give to you is what's best for you. What God warned you for and what He wants you to accomplish in your life is already warned in you. Look at this next verse. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, listen to this. I am convinced of this, that God who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until it is finished on the day of Christ Jesus. It means, beloved, God already built it up in you, warred in you, and all you need to do is to walk through it and it will be God that will start in your life and it will be God that will put it into the finished work until that day of Christ Jesus. Beloved, God is simply telling us, follow my plans, for my plans is for your own good. It is the best for your life. Amen? So now, as we end, let's review the five dimensions of prayer. Number one, I look backward to the cross. Number two, I look upward to my Father's loving face. Number three, I will look inward to Jesus living inside me. I look around and ask the Holy Spirit to use me. And I look forward for my future in faith. Beloved, it's my prayer that today, these five dimensions of prayer. Actually, this is a way that we can look at prayer in a fresh new look. But it's the same. It's the heart of our Heavenly Father. It is my prayer that today, pray with me. Let's pray this prayer together. Let's apply this right now. Beloved, always remember this, that through praying these five dimensions of prayer, it is all that you need to continue to pursue to continue to follow Jesus with favor, blessing, and fulfillment in your life. I believe that all of us wants to gain favor from the Lord. We want to be blessed. We want to uh, see and discover God's wonderful plans for our life. But we need to strengthen and go deeper in our relationship and in our intimacy with God through prayer, through His Word, through worship, through serving Him, through reaching out to other people, through growing deep together with His family. God wants you to live out your purposes in life as you continue to develop 
your intimate relationship with Him. So now, as we end, let's pray together this prayer. Be with me. Join me as we apply these five points in our prayer today. Let's bow down our head and let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much, O God, for this wonderful message that you have given us. And today, God, we want to look back on that cross. And we want to bring back all our gratitude and thanksgiving. Thank you, Abba Father, for loving us through giving your Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins so that we can be connected again in your presence. Abba Father, we would like also to pray that, Lord, we want to see your face, that loving face, that merciful, gracious, and loving face that's looking toward us. Father, thank you so much for rem reminding us today that we need to look up. And every time we look up to you, you want us to call you Daddy, Papa, Tatay, Abba. Dad, we acknowledge today that you are our Heavenly Father, that you love us so much as your child. Abba Father, we want also to check our hearts. We believe that Jesus is living inside of us. But there are also things that we don't want that's living inside us, especially our innate sinful nature. Father, if you see any pride in our life, take it out in Jesus' name. If you see any self-centeredness, selfishness, grudges, unforgiveness, and any other things that can hinder me in becoming more like Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to release it to you now, Abba Father. And Lord, thank you so much for cleansing our hearts and reveal more every day what you want to change in our life. And we are willing to follow you. Abba Father, thank you so much for reminding us that this life that you have for us is not meant to just live and survive and just die. This life that you have given us is a precious gift from you. This is a privilege that you have given us as our Creator. And thank you so much for reminding us that Holy Spirit, give us that reminder every day to ask this prayer. Show us in what ways we can serve you today. Holy Spirit, guide us and reveal to us areas in our life every day, not only every Sunday, not only a specific day in a week, but every day, use our lives to become light and to give hope to people who need Jesus. And Father, today, Lord, we want to surrender our future. We want to surrender our dreams. We want to surrender our own plans and own desires. We are facing this big challenge right now, this challenge of uncertainties. But Lord, we want to put our hope, we want to put our future in your hands. And by faith, we commit to follow you. Abba Father, help us, O God, to follow you day by day. And it's our joy and it's our prayer that we can continue to grow stronger and intimately with you now and forevermore. This is all we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Beloved, before I will have my final challenge for you and before I will close in a word of prayer, that prayer is a model prayer for you. It's my prayer that you can pray it with your family, pray it with your spouse, pray it with your D group, with your church mate, with your friends, and even those people who are in need. Pray that prayer. You can do it in your own words, in your own way, but never forget the five dimensions of prayer. Because it will change everything the way you look at who God is, especially during this time of pandemic. And now, as we have our response song, I want you to take time now to just reflect upon God's goodness. Reflect upon the things that we covered in this sermon, in this message. And I want you to speak now personally to the Lord as you hear and worship with us with our response song. I want you to talk to God. Or maybe this is a time for you to just be still in God's presence and wait for Him to talk to you. Beloved, after this response song, let me give you the final challenge and our closing prayer. Let's now 
prepare our hearts as we respond through this song to our Abba Father. Beloved, today, as I end, this is my final charge for you. Starting today, when you pray to God, call Him Daddy, call Him Father, call Him Papa or Tatay or Abba. That's gonna be our one challenge for the whole week and for the rest of our life that if you want to experience and if you want to unleash the power of prayer in your life, one basic step that we need to do is starting today, let's commit together that when we pray, we call Him our Heavenly Father. Amen? So beloved, I hope and pray that you are blessed by our message today and I hope that we can apply it together. Now, let's end this with a word of prayer. Abba Father, thank you so much for reminding us and challenging us to call you by name through how we look at you, through this relationship that we have with you. You are our daddy. You are our tatay. You are our papa. You are our abba. And Father, starting today, we want to recommit to you that every time we pray, we need to talk like talking to our Father. That our relationship is a father-child relationship, not a king and a servant relationship, but a father and a child or a son or a daughter relationship. Dad, thank you so much. Papa, salamat kaayo. Tatay, thank you so much for being faithful and good to our lives. Tay, it's my prayer that for all the people who are watching and worshiping with us today, Pour out your blessing to them, Dad. Let them feel that they're never alone. That in this pandemic, that in this season, you are with us. Take good care for us, Dad. And we just want to surrender our lives, our future, our dreams, our concerns, our needs in your presence. Thank you all so much, Abba Father, for this wonderful day to worship you together as one family. This is all we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So, beloved, thank you so much for joining us today in our worship service online. Now, again, for those who are in Dumaguete, let me announce it again that we are now having our Ictus East, our physical worship service in Bethel Guest House every Sunday, 10 a.m. And if you want to join our physical worship service, please connect with us, PM us, or Contact Jonah so that you can have your seat number with you. We are observing the protocols and the precautionary measures for this COVID-19 so that we can have the confidence and the peace in mind that when we gather together, we are gathering with no distraction of this COVID-19, but we can burst out our hearts in worshiping the Lord. So beloved, again, thank you so much for joining us today and see you this Wednesday for our part four of our FDAP Discipleship. God bless you. Stay safe and stay strong, kapatid. See
turn it for good. You turn it for good. Yes, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. To get it now, let's see it. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good Every time, every time You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it Please take a minute for these announcements. We invite you to journey with us in our 40 days of prayer campaign. It is open for everyone and we encourage couples, family, group of friends and individuals to join us as we start on August 16, 2020. For registration please contact 0927-459-3750 or you can send a message in our Facebook page. Join us in our online Sunday worship service every Sunday at 10 a.m. via our Facebook page or YouTube channel. Join us in our midweek worship service every Wednesday at 7 p.m. via our Facebook page or YouTube channel. If you have prayer requests contact 0927-459-3750 or message us in Facebook. Discover your God-given purpose in God's family. For more information contact 0917-187-3183 or message us in Facebook. Life must not be lived out alone. Experience following Jesus Christ with other disciples. For more information contact 0917-187-3183 or you can send a message in our Facebook page. Express your worship through giving. Give through the BPI mobile app. If you have a BPI account, you can install the BPI mobile app on your mobile device and simply scan through the QR code. You can give through PayPal. Simply scan the QR code. You can also drop your tithes and offerings at our center or have it picked up at your desired location. Please send us a message for more info. Thank you for your time. Have a blessed day. Who am I? You are mindful of me. Yes, God. That you heal me when I call. Ooh. Is it true that? You are my thinking of me, how you love me, it 
God Almighty. 